sorry if I'm all sweaty and messed up. I just got finished uh, putting some more wood chips down on that uh, expansion in my garden. Uh, I'll show that to you at the end of this, but let's talk about what's going on. I, I just saw that uh, Nestle, Unilever, and Pepsi are all warning there's going to be food shortages. Now those are major companies. Like I think uh, Unilever has something like 400 brands under it. And they're all processed food pretty much. So it's probably stuff we shouldn't really be eating, but whatever. It's a, it's a new day. <laughs> Get, you know, uh, store up with what you can find. I, I don't think, you know, I was talking to some of my friends and they their stores are mostly restocked. But I live out in the country, so I think we're kind of like the last in the supply chain and they're picked over. Um, you can't find soup, rice, or beans, or corn, or if you find it, it's not there for long, and people kind of wait for the trucks to come, and then all go in the same day and get it quickly. That sort of buying's happening out in the country. I don't know if it's happening in the cities. Uh, people are, when I talk to them online, aren't having as hard of a time as, uh, as we are out here, but there's red flags everywhere. I mean, those are major companies that are saying, hey, there's a food shortage coming because they can't get the supplies and the ingredients they need. Some of the countries have shut down their borders. They're not shipping out. The other um, countries are just keeping their own food. They don't want to ship it out until they know what's going on. So there's going to be some sort of thing. Now, hopefully it's just like a week or two where the pickings are slim and then everything bounces back. But this can spiral out of hand really fast. I mean, people get scared and it can get really, really out of hand. So right now, you can go out and find stuff. Uh, they've restocked, but I would still suggest you stock up, especially if you didn't go around the first time. Make a list of everything you might need. Uh, you can't find flour or yeast or anything like that around here. That stuff's all gone. The beans, uh, anything dry that stays for years and years is gone. Now, I'm told that in some of the bigger cities, uh, you can still still find it. You can still find it at some of the little dollar general stores, but you can't get much. It's like five pounds of rice. It's not. You can't go out and get a 50 pound bag or something. So the uh, other thing is um, when the $1,200 stimulus checks hit, uh, the the government money checks. It's uh, I think a lot of people might pay their bills, but then they're going to run out and buy food because they missed kind of the first round. And if this doesn't get better, like they're projecting in the news somewhere, I read they might lock some areas down till June. I mean, that's insane. That'll completely collapse an economy. People cannot handle this till June, July. Uh, so that's that's going to be a problem. And then what you're going to see is, I don't think it'll be an immediate thing. You'll get out, everything, they'll be like, Here's your government money check. Go spend, spend, spend. Get the economy back on track. But what will happen is that initial wave will happen. People kind of poke their heads out. And it'll feel normal for a week or two. But then you'll notice it's, things are changing quietly and quickly. And then one day it'll go right back to what it was. I think, uh, especially if there's like a second wave or, you know, there's, there's such a financial economic crash coming because of this. It's, it's a problem. So, anyway just prepare go out and buy it now before everybody gets their checks and runs out and buys the staples hopefully you've stocked up enough but really what you should be focusing now on is your garden your garden's your ultimate security you know no matter what the heck the economy does you can feed your family something a lot of people aren't talking about is also what's going on in east africa there is like a biblical locust plague that is just devastating the farmers there if you go look at the videos they're incredible uh, i've never seen anything like it and here you can see some pictures of they can't even fly the airplanes because they're getting so damaged. So it's affecting uh, trying to get food out as well. It's going to be bad there. But all hope's not lost. You see, Florida just decided that World Wrestling Entertainment, WWE, is considered essential. Now, I don't know if you can buy seeds there, but you can get your wrestling. Go Florida. Oh, God. Lastly, I want to say thank you to all the retail workers and the truckers out there that are killing themselves to... Uh, Keep the supplies rolling. Thank you. So today, let me show you what I am working on. So this is a uh, bed I'm expanding here. Let's take a look. But what happened, I told you before, was that the uh, this was uncared for for about a year or two. It just kind of was like a flower pollinator garden. And it got completely overrun because I did not put the cardboard out far enough. This time I'm correcting it. I'm going to go out a foot and then I'm probably going to go out another foot so I never have to do this again. 
So I go around the edges weeding and I finally put the chips down. That's why I'm so tired. Uh, that's about five to six inches of chips on top of three to four inches of dirt. And although this side will be a first year garden, this side is old chips. It's three or four years old. So I expect really good um, growth on that side. So I'll put the simpler stuff over here that I think is more hardy and the stuff that really needs good nutrition over there. And we'll watch. I mean, if uh, the leaves start turning yellow, I know that, you know, for the first year, this, this is not going to be that great of a garden. It'll get you through, but it doesn't really start kicking until about year three. But you got to start it, so it's out. It'll be fine for things like potatoes. You'll do no problem. But things like if you're growing that need a lot of nitrogen, peas or something, you might, you might see uh, some problems there. Okay, so get gardening. No more excuses. Go do it. So I forgot to mention that uh, you support the channel by obviously using the Amazon links. That really helps. Remember, you got to go into Amazon first before you shop anywhere. Uh, that's a great free way to help the channel. And it's appreciated because YouTube's horrible right now. And I keep trying to get off YouTube and move away from them. You can find me over at uh, BitChute in Brighton. I just started an account there. So feel free to subscribe there. And I dropped the stories out a few days earlier over there. So that's the advantage. You get the news first. Um, other than that, I do some wood carvings that I'm just trying to keep things afloat right now since the office is pretty much closed. Uh, trying to, you know, bail myself out instead of going to the government. So if you guys are interested in buying uh, some wood carvings, check it out. Just contact me, drop me a, a comment, or you'll find my email in the, in the comments if you're interested. Thanks. Well, if you guys also see me sometimes carve wood art here, I'm kind of a beginner wood carver, but if any of you guys want to buy any of this, I'm just trying to, uh, because the YouTube has completely cut my money. It's, it's dropped it for about 80% in the last two months. So with my job gone and that gone, I'm looking to do what I can to hustle to just to keep things afloat. So I'm selling these wood pieces. Little stuff like this, like here's that paper moon I carved. Um, the vintage paper moon. Most of my stuff glows in the dark. So you'll see that just about every piece I sell glows in the dark. And they're almost all candlesticks at this size. Anything you fit in your hand, you will, there's a little hole in the top to, to burn a candle. And uh, you can get a better idea. There's like, you know, mushroom glow in the dark. But you'll see the hole there. You can see a little bit of me working on this guy. Anyway, um, these run about 35 bucks, And you can request. I'll make something like it. Most of these, uh, a few of these I still have for sale if you want, but I don't have like an Etsy page or anything. Like there's a, a Witch is Not that glows in the dark. Uh, these medium, these small pieces run about 35 bucks. Once we jump up to medium pieces like this, the medium pieces run anywhere from uh, 50 bucks up to 80 depending on how elaborate. The, uh, like something like this would be probably 55 bucks. Then something, oh, and he glows in the dark. Here's his other half. But something like this where I've, again, a wall hanger, something like this. Probably around 50 bucks. But this guy has a protective symbol in his beard I carved in. That takes a long time. And that's protection against illness and disease. And I actually put it in my office. You'll see it in the corner there under the lamp. Something like that's uh, about, usually about $80. And then you go up to the large sizes. They run about $100. And they're usually wall hangers. Then I go up to the totems, the really larger sizes. And this thing has multiple faces on it. It takes me a very long time. There's four different faces on this thing. Something like this would be about 150 bucks. Now, none of this includes shipping, and we'll have to talk about shipping. But if you're interested, you want to help keep me afloat, uh, either use the Amazon link below or consider buying a wood piece. Just leave a comment, and I'll send you an email, and we can talk, and I'll make you a custom one. Lastly, I've been trying for years to get off YouTube. It's like uh, being in a relationship with an abusive spouse or something. So you will find out that I've been publishing my videos a day or two early over at BitChute and Brighton. Uh, and if you're interested, sign up over there and check it out. If not, you can wait for the videos here. I'll still put them up here. Love you guys. Thanks so much for the support.